aftermath. Mum was waiting me in front of the school, along with all the other parents when the bus arrived. Mr. Tushman told me on the bus ride home that they had called my parents to tell them there had been a situation the night before, but that everyone was fine. He said the camp director and several of the counselors went looking for the hearing aid in the morning while we went swimming in the lake, but they couldn't find it anywhere. Broarwood would reimburse us the cost of the hearing aids, he said. They felt bad about what had happened. I wondered if Eddie had taken my hearing aids with him as a kind of souvenir, something to remember the orc. Mum gave me a tight hug when I got off the bus, but she didn't slam me with questions like I thought she might. Her hug felt good, and I didn't shake it off like some other of the other kids were doing with their parents' hugs. The bus driver started unloading our duffel bags, and I went to find mine while Mum talked to Mr. Tushman and Miss Rubin who had walked over to her. As I rolled my bag toward her, a lot of the kids who don't usually say anything to me were nodding hello or patting my back as I walked by them. Ready? Mom said when she saw me. She took my duffel bag and I didn't even try to hold on to it. I was fine with her carrying it. If she had wanted to carry me on her shoulders, I would have been fine with that too, to be truthful. As we started to walk away, Mr. Tushman gave me a quick, tight hug, but didn't say anything. Home. Mum and I didn't talk much the whole walk home. And when we got to the front stoop, I automatically looked in the front bay window because I forgot for a second that Daisy wasn't going to be there like always, perched on the sofa with her front paws on the windowsill, waiting for us to come home. It made me kind of sad when we walked inside. As soon as we did, Mum dropped my duffel bag and wrapped her arms around me and kissed me on my head and on my face like she was breathing me in. It's okay, Mum. I'm fine, I said, smiling. She nodded and took my face in her hands. Her eyes were shiny. I know you are, she said. I missed you so much, Augie. I missed you too. I could tell she wanted to say a lot of things, but she was stopping herself. Are you hungry, she asked starving. Can I have a grilled cheese? Of course, she answered and immediately started to make the sandwich while I took my jacket off and sat down at the kitchen counter. Where's Via? I asked. She's coming home with dad today. Boy, did she miss you, Augie, mom said. Yeah? She would have liked the nature reserve. You know what movie they played? The Sound of Music. You'll have to tell her that. So do you want to hear about the bad part or the good part first? I asked after a few minutes, leaning my, head, leaning my head on my hand. Whatever you want to talk about, she answered. Well, except for last night, I had an awesome time, I said. I mean, it was just awesome. That's why I'm so bummed. I feel like they ruined the whole trip for me. No, sweetie, don't let them do that to you. You were there for more than 48 hours, and that awful part that lasted one hour, don't let them take that away from you, okay? I know, I nodded. Did Mr. Tushman tell you about the hearing aids? Yes, he called us this morning. Was Dad mad? Because they're so expensive? Oh my gosh, of course not, Augie. He just wanted to know that you were all right. That's all that matters to us. And that you don't lose those... Don't let those thugs ruin your trip. I kind of laughed at the way she said the word thugs. What, she asked. Thugs, I teased her. That's the kind, that's kind of an old-fashioned word. Okay, jerks, morons, imbeciles, she said, flipping over the sandwich in the pan. Crintos, as my mother would have said. Whatever you want to call them, if I saw them on the street, I would. She shook her head. They were pretty big, Mum. I smiled. Seventh graders, I think. She shook her head. Seventh graders? Mr. Tushman didn't tell us that. Oh my goodness. Did he tell you how Jack stood up for me, I said. And Amos was like, bam, he rammed right into the leader. They both, they both crashed to the ground like in a real fight. It was pretty awesome. Amos' lip was bleeding and everything. He told us there was a fight, but she said, looking at me with her eyebrows raised. I'm just, phew, I'm just so grateful you and Amos and Jack are fine.
When I think about what could have happened, she trailed off, flipping the grilled cheese again, my Montauk hoodie got totally shredded. Well, that can be replaced, she answered. She lifted the grilled cheese onto a plate and put the plate in front of me on the counter. Milk or white grape juice? Chocolate milk, please. I started devouring the sandwich. Oh, can you do that in a special way you do it with the froth? How did you and Jack end up at the edge of the woods in the first place? She said, pouring the milk into a tall glass. Jack had to go to the bathroom, I answered, my mouth full. As I was talking, she spooned the chocolate powder and started rolling a small whisk between her palms really fast. But there was a huge line, and he didn't want to wait. So he went towards the woods to pee. She looked up, to, up at me while she was whisking. I know she was thinking we shouldn't have done that. The chocolate milk in the glass now had two, a two-inch froth on the top. That looks good, Mom. Thanks. And then what happened, she said, putting the glass in front of me. I took a long drink of the chocolate milk. Is it okay if we don't talk about it anymore right now? Oh, okay. I promise I'll tell you about it later when Dad and Via come home. I'll tell you all everything in detail. I just don't want to have to tell the whole story over and over, you know? Absolutely. I finished my sandwich in two more bites and gulped down the chocolate milk. Wow, you practically inhaled that sandwich. Do you want another one, she said. I shook my head and wiped my mouth with the back of my hand. Mom, am I always going to have to worry about jerks like that, I asked. Like, when I grow up, is it always going to be like this? She didn't answer right away, but took my plate and glass and put them in the sink and rinsed them with water. There are always going to be jerks in the world, Augie, she said looking at me. But I really believe, and Daddy really believes, that there are more good people on this earth than bad people. And the good people watch out for each other and take care of each other, just like Jack was there for you and Amos and those other kids. Oh yeah, Miles and Henry, I answered. They were awesome too. It's weird because Miles and Henry haven't really been very nice to me at all during the year. Sometimes people surprise us, she said, rubbing the top of my head. I guess. Want another glass of chocolate milk? No, I'm good, I said. Thanks, Mum. Actually, I'm kind of tired. I didn't sleep too good last night. You should take a nap. Thanks for leaving me Babu, by the way. You got my note? She smiled. I slept with him both nights. She was about to say something else when her cell phone rang and she answered. She sta started beaming as she listened. Oh my goodness, really? What kind? She said excitedly. Yep, he's right here. He was just about to take a nap. Want to say hi? Oh, okay. See you in two minutes. She clicked it off. That was daddy, she said excitedly. He and Via are just down the block. He's not at work, I said. He left early because he couldn't wait to see you, she said. So don't take a nap quite yet. Five seconds later, Dad and Via came through the door. I ran into Dad's arms, and he picked me up and spun me around and kissed me. He didn't let go of me for a full minute until I said, Dad, it's okay. And then it was Via's turn, and she kissed me all over like she used to do when I was little. It wasn't until she stopped that I noticed the big white cardboard box they had brought in with them. What is that? I said. Open it, said Dad, smiling, and he and Mum looked at each other like they knew a secret. Come on, Augie, said Via. I opened the box, and inside was the cutest little puppy I've ever seen in my life. It was black and furry, with a pointy little snout and bright black eyes and small ears that flopped down.